Hello everyone, here's Dennis. I want to give you a short tutorial for the Coursera class Statistical Mechanics, Algorithms and Computations. Maybe many of you wondered in tutorial 3 about the direct pins no reject.py code that was introduced to us. It was a very short code, but it contained a lot of mathematical insight and yeah, a quite neat, short, brisk implementation of a complicated algorithm that is able to return without any um, rejections a list of uniformly, um, of randomly, un uniformly randomly drawn positions of pins on a line. Now, I think this is a nice code, but like so many other codes in this class, it could profit heavily from some comments that could help us to understand better what's actually going on. So I want to take a few minutes of showing you a personal implementation I made of the same code that can help you to understand it a little bit better. Um, for this I open up my idle window here and what you can see here is pretty much the same code that was also provided in the class. I just put the three lines of the algorithm into a function called place pins. And if I go here into my shell, I can call this place pins function. And what you'll see is it will return a list of five, uh, five elements. And each element represents the x position of a randomly placed pin on a line of length two. Um, now, yeah, you knew from class that algorithm works. Now, how does it work? Um, in order to explain it a little bit better, I rewrote these three lines of code in something like 30 lines of code with some comments. And so let's talk, talk about what this placing pins actually does. Here is the main outline of the algorithm we explained. Well, we start with a line of length L. And now each of these dashes presents one possible position. And now what we want is that some of these dashes here are replaced with actual pins. And these pins can have any kind of width. Now the idea of the algorithm is that we take um, that we take this line here and we subtract out of it the space that the pins would take if we would place them. So what we have to do is we have to take the line and assume that we have the pins in there. And then we simply have to erase all the pins out of the line. And if we do that, then we are left with a shorter line that is, is exactly the same length as all the, um, the non-occupied lengths in between the pins. And now what we do is we randomly place the center positions or one x position of each each pin on this line and here for example we place a first position like this in the line or we can do it for a random number of n pins and just place them randomly in here okay and after we have done this we now have to um, do this inflation step they called it so what we got to do is this line here is still kind of the original line minus all the width of the different pins. So we have to get this width back in here. So what we do is we take the first pin and we inflate it, as you can see here. So before, before it looked something like this. Where is it? Um, and now we take this pin position and we inflate it to an actual pin. And now we got to do this for all of the pins. First this one, and then the next one, and then so on. And if we do this, then we will end up with what you see represented here. And this is exactly what we want. This is a line of length L with N pins of a given width inserted. Okay, now let's try to implement this in the Python code. Okay, for this we first define a few variables that make it easier to understand what we're talking about. First, let's rename the variable L 
line length. We also introduce a variable called pin width that is um, just two times the sigma that was defined in the code. And we also introduce a variable called numpins that is just the number of pins um, and holds the value of n previously defined. Okay, now the first thing we gotta do is we have to reduce our line length to this line length minus the length of the individual, the width of the number of pins. And so this is kind of the remaining line, so we call it the remaining line, and this is equal to the line length minus the width of the pins minus pin width times the number of the pins, times num pins. Okay, what we do now is on this remaining list, we place all the individual positions randomly. Okay, we do this the following way. We first define a list, which is empty, and it's called pin positions. And now for each, and now for each pin that we want to place, we um, once perform the following iteration. We say for i in the number of pins, so if we have 10 pins, we'll do this 10 times, we do the following. We first obtain a random position, and we do this by randomly drawing a number from the uniform distribution between zero and whatever is remaining of our original line. Okay, now this random position, we need to put into our pin positions array or list. And we do this by using the append function. Now ca calling pin underscore positions dot append allows us to add or append this element to the empty list. And so, after having performed this, we are left with an array of, um, or with a list of pin positions that are uniformly, uh, so they're randomly drawn from the uniform distribution between zero and um, the remaining of the line. The problem is that these positions aren't sorted. So you can imagine we have something like this. The first number we sorted, uh, the first number we found um, has a value somewhere in the middle of the line. The second number we draw was somewhere more to the front. The third one more in the third quarter of the line and so on. So they're just randomly in there. But in order for our inflation to work, we have to start with the very first pin position and inflate that one and then the next one and then so on. So in order to be able to do that, we have to sort our list. Now, this is quite easy in Python. What you can do is just you use the inbuilt method called list.sort. So whenever you have a list, you can just write down the name of the list, put a point there, a dot, and this allows you now to, to call all the functions that are defined for this type of, for this data type or for this class. Now pin positions is the instance of the class list and can access all the methods of this class. In this case, we access the sort function. Now sort is a function that doesn't return anything, but it actually works on the list that is calling the function. So after this call, now all the positions, uh, now all the um, entries in the pin positions list are sorted. And I provided you here some comments. You can just um, check this out for yourself if, to, if you uncomment them and then run the code. Okay, um, now after we have um, placed the pins, uh, the pin positions and we sorted them, now we have to do the inflation. I defined the following list, final pin positions, to contain the inflated positions of the placed pins. Now, um, we have to do the inflation for each pin in order, so we again use a for loop that starts at zero and ends at the number of pins. Now i will be as the index taking the numbers from 0 to number of pins minus 1, so maybe from 0 to 9 in the case of 10 pins, and can be used as the index to access the um, right entries in the pin positions list that we previously filled with our pin positions. Now what we do is first we pick the position that we want to inflate. And we say the position we want to inflate is simply the 
ith index or the ith entry of the pin positions list. And now how do we inflate this? Well, let's think about it. When we take the first value um, and say we picked the center of the pin and we, we picked the left, the left side of the pin, what do we have to do to get to the, to the real center? Well, for the first pin, we would have to go a little bit to the right and we would have to go half of the pin width to the right or one sigma to the right. Then we would be right at the center of the first pin. So the center here would be this position plus one half of the pin width. The second one, though, needs to be pushed to the right, the one half of the pin width that this one was pushed to the right. But then, you know, when you moved the center from here to here, then you have to remember that the halo of this pin is to the left as well as to the right. So this one has to be moved one half pin to the right for um, moving this one to the right. But then it has to be moved another one half pin width to the right because of the right side of the first pin. And then you would have the left edge of this pin. And now to get this also in the center, you have to add a third time a half width of the pin. And now this together um, can be summed up in this inflated by variable. This is pretty much just saying, well, if I have the zero of pin, the first one, then this here is zero, and I just move it to the right by one half of the pin width. But if I have the first pin, then I move it by one half over to get it in the center. And then I have to add it, add to it also all the line spaces I added for the pins before. In this case, I have put already one pin up. So I have to also shift this one by another pin width. For the second one, well, the second one here, um, when i is two, so the third pin, this one has to be moved one half of the width to get its center, and then plus two times the pin width that was occupied by these two. And the third one, then one half plus three times, and so on. And this will allow you to push this one forward, this one a little bit more, this one a little bit more, until you get exactly the spacing here. Okay, so what we do is we first grab our position, then we calculate by what we need to inflate it, and then we define the inflated pin position, and we say that this is our original pin position plus whatever we want to inflate it by. Okay, now this is the final answer for a given pin. So we want to save this pin position in our final pin position list. And we do this again with the append function. And after doing so, we are done. This for loop here will fill the final pin position with inflated pin positions, and it will return it at the end. To prove you that it really does this, I will show you once a call to this function from the shell. Place oops, pins explained and it returns you this list of pin positions. Um, I invite you to look over it for yourself and to see, like they always said, what you can modulate in this code to make it more understandable for you. It's especially important that you put in here and there some print lines so that you see what values the variables take on. Um, I also have to say that during this video, I had to change the code one or two times um, the final version is correct, and I think whatever I said was always correct, but um, usually parts of the code below me talking may have not been all the way, all the time perfectly correct. So please forgive me for that. Um, I'm just kind of running out of time here. So I hope this will help a few of you guys. Um, if you want to see more of these kind of videos, I can try to find some time for it. And I Hope you'll enjoy the rest of this class. Goodbye.